A couple of weeks ago, I got my first real mountain bike. I picked a Santa Cruz Nomad and I took it out on a few rides here in the Pacific Northwest and I quickly realized that I needed a front fender. I was just getting sprayed in the face with mud everywhere I went. I decided to design and 3D print my own fender and I wanna show you how I did it. I'm gonna give you guys an overview of how I designed this mountain bike fender. I only used two dimensions from the bicycle to actually make this. This fender is made in two pieces, and the reason it's made in two pieces is because I'm 3D printing it. You'll have a, a base plate like this, and having a flat surface on the part to where you can print from, so this purple surface is going to be on this black bed plate of the machine and that's going to allow me a nice clean surface to stick to the bed plate and the machine can build this. So once that's built, then you'll take and slap the two fenders together right here. Trying to keep the mud out of my face. And through bolt both of them onto the fork. No zip ties needed. The tool that I use that's most important in this is called sketch picture. I set up my bike and I look perpendicular to this face. This is where the actual fender is going to mount. And here's the two mounting holes. So the distance between the two mounting holes was one of the two dimensions that I used to make this. And it happened to be 42 millimeters uh, between, between these two holes. So if I measure from hole to hole, you'll see 42 millimeters. So when I bring in this picture, I set the scale so that those holes are the right distance apart. And then what that does is it makes everything else in the picture relative, relatively accurate in size. So then you can just trace around the different parts of the image and you'll know that it's going to fit pretty well. There's one image, but I did another image uh, from a different angle. Let me turn that one on. Here's the side profile of my bicycle. It allowed me to shape the fender around the tire in a way that I knew it wasn't going to hit the tire. I took a measurement from the bottom of the shock to the top of the shock. It was like 22 inches. And then I scaled the image and put it in place so that it would do the same thing as the other one. I can, I can use this to trace. Now we've got two different images correctly aligned. You can see uh, this one is on the mounting surface and this one is on the center line. And I want to emphasize the, the importance of sketch picture and how I utilized uh, these pictures as a tracing aid, basically, to, to kind of do a lot of the work for me. So now we'll just back through this and, and see how I made it. So I started with this front image with the mounting locations. You can see I just trace the shape that I thought would work and I did what we call an extrude made it gave it some thickness and then the second thing I did was what we call a loft a loft uses multiple sketch profiles to create a shape so this loft used three sketch profiles that you'll see here here and here and as it comes back from the base it gets thinner and thinner so you'll see that the fenders thick up here thinner and thinner and that kind of gives it some flexibility at the end and some stiffness at the base I'll turn on sketch picture one so you can see it got this nice fender shape we can kind of see what the tire is gonna look like a little bit. 
move on to the next part, which are the mounting holes. So the mounting holes line up with the casting, which are 42 millimeters apart. That way we've got a nice bolt-on solution that doesn't require any zip ties like a lot of other fenders. And I went ahead and spot faced or counterboard this to give the bolts a nice place to fasten down on. Nice flat area to tighten down on with the washer. Next, I did the finishing touches on the rear portion of the fender. Just kind of rounded the edges, made it so it wouldn't be sharp, and made it look pretty good. So then I'm starting on the front portion of this fender because I want it to come out over the front of the front tire as well. I'll turn on this. I want it to come out here too. So I did the base flange right here. See, I add it right there, but I, it's actually a separate piece. And then I did another loft on the front to come out over the tire towards the front a little bit. I think that'll help with a little bit extra mud protection. And then at that point, I just uh, finished it off just like I did the back one, rounded the corners, made it look good. Uh, a little bit of a rib on the bottom. I did that to add some strength to the front portion of the fender because this corner here has to be a, has to be a sharp corner. And then to top things off, I added a Risky logo, of course. I'm making this fender free for download for you guys in STL format. So in case you have a 3D printer and you want to create one of these for your bike, uh, you can jump on our website, riskyriders.com, and it'll be in the download section for free. The fenders are done and I'm gonna go put them on the bike and see how they fit. Here's the fender that I have on my bike right now and this is made from a notebook binder cover. Zip ties are cut and the pad, the, well, it looks like a pad, the fender is off. Let's check out how it fits. that didn't work very well at all. So this is where I added relief to the sides and now it will only tighten down on the center section. Try to get it going as fast as I can with my hand. Sounds like a NASCAR. <laughs> Yeah.
If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram at Risky Riders. See you next time.